What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Fired Up. Um, Barrick, uh, he's uh, via telephone right over here. And, uh, yep. How you doing, guys? How all right, going? so today we're talking about the tragic passing of Kobe Bryant. Um, I'm still in a state of shock, in a sense. Um, I, on Saturday, Saturday I was just talking to my wife about him and, you know, what what made him so special um, of a uh, you know of a person, not just a player in general. It's just not not you know, I was using him as a metaphoric analogy in a sense though of uh, you know what it takes to actually be successful in life, not just in in, in basketball, and. Um, it is it's definitely definitely uh uh definitely sad. Uh Barrett, yes, you man. want you you wanna chime in chime in here? Absolutely, absolutely, because uh I wanna go the route of learning about it. Initially I didn't think it was true. I thought it was a joke. Yeah, me too. I thought, I thought, I thought so too. It's yeah. a joke by someone I did not know at all who felt very comfortable to approach me and said it was a bad day for him. And then he mentioned that he was going to ruin my day and did not mean to do so. And I said to him, well, what the hell are you talking about? He told me Kobe Bryant had passed away in a helicopter crash. And that's when I continuously said, oh, you're lying, you're lying. Then someone else who was within the airshot approached us with their cell phone and showed us a CNN uh, advertisement that had Kobe Bryant's face. And obviously what was written on top of the inscription was that he had passed away in a helicopter crash. His daughter, 13 years of age, and uh, seven other people, including the pilot. Um, I had to say maybe a half hour after I've learned it, I did shut a tear. Not necessarily for knowing him, but knowing of him. And being that he was at the pinnacle, you know, he was at a, another level that we could not even imagine. He has verbally gone on many type, different times and said that basketball is in the rear view. That he was looking forward to helping his daughter get better at basketball, being a better man, being a better husband, obviously a better father, entrepreneur, businessman. You know, he was looking forward to that next level. At 41 years of age, I think he was going to have a better life after. Now, I'll tell you something. Michael Strahan, who once played for New York Giants, he won the Super Bowl in 2007, and he was a great player, but he did better after football. And everybody should know Michael Strahan. He was on uh, uh, even Patriots. And uh, now he has a number of shows. He does pregame shows for football. He's a man that's got a clothing line. And obviously, he's a better father. And um, I only use him as a great example because some of these guys do better after sports. And my, uh, Kobe Bryant was certainly on his way to being a great entrepreneur. Probably better than Michael Jordan. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, man. He's the same age as and, and born in the same month as as myself personally, and by by you know by any means, I, I know there's still more life in me. There's still more stuff at forty one years forty one years old that I want to do, you know. So this guy wasn't just gonna sit here with that type of mindset, with that type of work ethic, and just you know. You know, uh, sit in a rocking chair. I think he was destined to do like you, like you just you know illustrated. <clears throat> he was destined to do greater things. You know, then you know probably even playing basketball in, in a sense though. So yeah, go ahead. I mean, you finish up, Barrick. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, man. No, 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 no. I mean, that's just that's basically where we can both say that this man was on his way to doing bigger, better things, and you know, um, his wife just spoke. Recently, she finally came out today and spoke and wanted to thank everyone for their wishes and uh, their heartfelt prayers and and to say that the Mamba Foundation is something that you can donate charities to and they're going to 
complete, continue Kobe's work with the Mamba Foundation and the Mamba f- facilities that will be used. And um, Connecticut University Women Huskies are going to create a shrine for Gigi because she was probably going to go to to play basketball. And uh, they have a jersey. And apparently they're going to unveil it. Either at the end of the season, during the season, or maybe when. I think that's very, very admirable of them. Um, I think the NBA is heading in that direction where that, that no team in the NBA, not one player who plays in the NBA will wear either number eight or number 24. They're working on that. I hope they come through with that. So you think it was you think it was right for them to actually cancel the games because you had mixed opinions on that whether the games should be canceled, whether they shouldn't be you know um, shouldn't be canceled you know because of depending on Kobe's mindset and um, what, what how do you feel about that? If it was Kobe, he want the game to continue. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that that goes without saying. Yeah. But people who are very close to Kobe, especially in the Lake organization. Being LeBron and Jeannie Buss and Magic Johnson and or Kyrie too. I mean, Kyrie, Ron, Ron Kyrie Malika. had a Kyrie had a a, um, a really close relationship with him too. Kyrie Irving. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he didn't play in the Knicks game, but uh, he he chose not to play in the grant of commission. But we're talking about canceling a game. Yeah. And um, they, um, I have no problem with them doing that. And I mentioned these people. Yeah, and, 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 the, and the thing them. is, uh, you know, we want to see these players, you know, we pay them to actually see them. I mean, you know, pay to see them at their peak, you know, at their peak performance. And if these guys aren't there mentally, you're just not going to really, you know, see, um, you know, good good entertainment out there in a sense. Because that's, that's what this really all is, is entertainment, you know. And you're paying to actually see the best players in the world perform at a high level. And um, a lot of that is is mentally, in a sense, though. You know, like 50, 60% of the, you know, playing ball is your, your head got to be into it. And if your head is yeah. not into it, then it's like, you know. Yep. I always say to you that game has to be played from the neck up, no matter if it's basketball, football, or this. <laughs> Those sports in particular, a lot of decision-making that has to happen within a matter of seconds. Absolutely. And if your head is not there, you can't perform well. So we, yeah. we both are in full agreement with that, but this is why I felt like the game shouldn't have been played because they, they did a great job. I want to add one thing, though, that LeBron and Anthony Davis have done. They have now put together on their persons tattoos of a mural of Kobe Bryant. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. Gonna, they're going to unveil that, I think, in the next game they play. Okay. Um, so, so, if anyone listens to that, stay tuned for that. I think that's something to look at. LeBron was really choked up. Um, you know. Yeah, but he, listen, LeBron's these guys, these were their Michael Jordans in a sense, though. Um, I started this watching. Era, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This era, I started watching basketball at, at 95. I didn't see Michael Jordan in the 80s. Um yeah, but I saw Kobe I grew, though. I grew up Michael yeah, yeah, yeah. Barrett, Barrett is, is yeah. yeah, Barrick is older than me. He's seen Jordan in his prime. Um yeah. I, I I I seen Jordan, you know, from ninety five up until he retired, you know, but Kobe was, you know, our Michael Jordan in a, in a sense though. Um mm-hmm. and he just paved the way. He showed you what it takes. You know, maybe LeBron too. And like I said, what makes what makes Kobe so special and, and I was throwing LeBron in there too, but you know Kobe first is that this man gave you everything. Um, he was worth two, three hundred million dollars, but you know he played like he was broke. You know we, we looked at you know let's say Darren Williams. I'm using him as, a, as an example. He got that ninety-eight million dollar contract, and he's like, okay, well I'm done. I'm, you know he's, you know mentally he I won't say check out, but he's not going to give you, you know, a hundred percent in a sense though they get. You know, they they tend to relax. Kobe Kobe still played like he was fighting for a check. You know, s- still fighting for his first contract. You know, that's what made Kobe so special. It was all about, um, it was all about the fans. You know, he appreciated the fans. He would play when, whenever he could. I mean, that 
I remember he you know, he tore his Achilles. He didn't he didn't want no stretcher. He walked off the court. He made his two free throws. Oh, before he did that, okay, before he did that, let me interrupt. Before he did that, he, he had to shoot those two free throws. That yeah. Was a foul. Yeah, absolutely. And and he made them both, and then he. And then he lived off that court. Yeah. And that was the type of player that he was, man. You know? So, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah. You, you pretty much summed up everything I was saying. Um, all right. So, you wanted to get into this uh, um, M- MSNBC thing. And um, there's a couple of uh, CNN articles. Well, CNN reporters calling Kobe a, a rapist and... But let's 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 touch into the MSNBC thing because uh, a lot of people were up in uh, up in um, up in arms about that. Well, listen, I, I um, <coughs> excuse me. I, I first, before we go into that, I, I, you know, I first, you know, I, I just, I think I just want to get into a concept of why are we still having these issues at a time where an icon, a close family member of this icon, and obviously close friends who are also one family as a whole is pretty much gone. And we're still sitting here, you know, possibly even discussing the issue of racism. And I'm not even going to go there because I'm, I'm sitting here as we speak. And I still cannot believe this man is gone. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and our job, obviously, was to report, you know, her views, the scene in which was unfolding at the crash site, and the 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 quick response from most family members and fans of, aboard who found locations either near. His high school, or the Mamba locate, or the Mamba Center, or Staples, anywhere they can go where they knew Kobe had some kind of impact, they were putting flowers and stuff down. In the middle of all that, she makes a comment that I was able to hear on a YouTube channel that actually was playing a person was actually playing the MSNBC clip at that time. And I heard her say the L.A. N-word and quickly covered herself and said the L.A. Lakers. Now, I replayed it five times because I wanted to make sure I heard the exact word. And she later came back and said she responded a certain way where it sounded like the N-word, but she kind of got tongue-tied and mixed the N with the L.A. Lakers concept, and that's why it sounded the way it sounded well. Okay, you had to come back with a response, so I had to go back and listen to it once more. And it just came out clear as day, crystal clear as day, that it was the N-word. So, she made the comment. Um, Everyone's calling for her job. And I don't even think we should even talk much about what she did and why she did it. Maybe we should talk about where we are as a whole in this situation and why are we even giving this girl even two seconds of time but I I, I defer to you on this because um, this situation is obviously way past bedtime oh yeah so you know what say you uh, you know, I don't know. It could have been higher ups from MSNBC to actually. Uh, we were talking about this a, a day, uh, you know, a couple of days ago. Um, that MSNBC and CNN are in a ratings uh, plunge right now. Um, uh, nobody's watching them. They're they're um, one dimensional news reporting, and you know, people actually see that and. They, they have to try to garner some type of attention somehow just to get ratings. Uh, we've seen a comedian, uh, so it was a white comedian, I forgot the guy's name, but he actually came out and he was saying, um, oh, Kobe is a racist and, and um, you know, when, when listen, when, you know, I followed that case a little bit and... Um, the woman, the woman who accused Kobe had two, you know, when they examined the DNA, they had two sets, two sets of DNA on there in a sense though. Um, 
so you know, listen, there's a lot of people out here that that um you know, for the woman who actually I'm not saying, you know, she, you know, she didn't get raped, but there's a lot there's a lot of women and men out here that goes clin you know, clinically undiagnosed and they have a lot of mental issues and um you know, and but but you know, there's people out there that's just looking for attention, especially CNN and and, and MSNBC, uh, calling him a rapist. Listen, it's it's their right to actually say that, you know. Um, but you got to look at you know a 13 year old girl, you know, uh, who didn't get a chance to actually live her life, died, and it's one thing if you want to say it's just Kobe, okay, but like, um, you know, families actually perished there and. And I just find it very tasteless of of MSNBC and CNN and that comedian, you know. And you're right, you, you know, we can't get this some, you know, we can't give them any kind of power or or any retention, you know, because then we just kind of, uh, you know, feed into it. We make, you know, we make it grow, basically. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the whole thing about it. Um... I, I just feel like at the end of the day, you know, she's going to get whatever's coming to her for the comment. And, and, and that's the whole thing. The comment was made. There's nothing you could do about it. <clears throat> and maybe there is a ratings issue with this. Maybe they told her, go ahead and risk your career. Go ahead and, <laughs> you know, go ahead and make that comment for the betterment of ratings. I'm not disparaging the ratings concept, but I, I'm just wondering two things. One, I wouldn't put it past them. And two, if I was her, why would I agree to do that? Because I'm risking my career by going. Absolutely, on yeah, yeah, comment. definitely, definitely. Um, um, that's the that's the logic I'm going with. So I don't know what was discussed. You don't know what's discussed. I'm not going to knock the concept that could have been discussed. But if it was, and if and this was a plan to come out and say this, and you went through with it anyway, well, shame on your your bosses. Shame on MSNBC. And shame on you for going through with it, you know. Um, yeah, absolutely. Right, but getting you know, getting back to Kobe over here, the, the helicopter, the helicopter they were using was a brand new helicopter, and um, from what I read, it's supposed to have this uh, flare technology in there, um, where it's able to actually see past fog, or um, you know, it can fly in pitch black uh, darkness. So why they wasn't using that technology is is beyond me. So um, there's no black sure. box recordings. Uh, so we we never I don't know we never know what's really going to truly happen. So we we got some some conspiracy theorists already coming out saying the the, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, um, off him. I'm like, come on, man, stop, 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 stop. Kobe, Kobe wasn't a political figure like that. You know, he didn't have, you know, if he, if he had some kind of dirt on him, um, then, I can, <laughs> then I can understand that. But he wasn't really, you know, uh, a person that's outspoken against the government or anything like that. Or Yeah, I don't know if you, I forgot okay. to send you that, though. But this guy was 